wanna show ya what I know. Break it free from the mainstream, the studio machine. I want it my way. Indie film nation. I want it my way. Indie film nation. Going all the way. Indie film nation. You know it's gotta be. Indie film nation. Hi, this is Mike Smith. And Bruce Himmelblow. We're on the streets of Park City, Utah for the Sundance 2009 Film Festival. This year at the festival, uh, Sundance and iTunes have paired together again with uh, short films yep. um, available online. But uh, these ones, in this case, are free online for a limited time. Limited and, time. Yeah, and we've, uh, as we had Sue catch up with uh, one of the filmmakers. And who was that uh, on this occasion? Yeah, we uh, had a nice little uh, chat with uh, Madeline Olnick from the movie Counter Transference. And we kept Sue's real busy, so we had, this is just the first of a number of interviews that we've done. All right, well, let's uh, throw to the interview with uh, Madeline. Joining me today is Madeline Olnick. Her movie is Counter Transference. It's playing here at Sundance. It's also going to be available on iTunes for you to download and see. You don't have to be here to see it. Tell me about it. Well, it's a comedy. Uh, it's a comedy about a bad therapy experience. A, a, about a, a woman with assertiveness problems who goes to see this therapist um, and sort of about the process of their therapy sessions. Now what was the what was the genesis for the project? How did you come up with the idea? Where, where did the idea come from? Well, I, I have uh, actually been a lifelong mental health consumer and I've seen many therapists and I like to I've always been fascinated by the process of therapy because I feel like um, on, the, on the surface, people's motives are very clear. It's sort of you're, someone's trying to get help and another person's trying to give help. But I feel like underneath that, there are these very complicated um, agendas um, in people's personalities and, and, and quests for power and inability to look at themselves. And all these things come into play. And, and when you think about it, Part of um, what art is trying to do is, is get to make you think about things and look at your life, and that's what therapy is also supposed to do. Um, but I saw it as a great sort of springboard for comedy. So therapy is comedy. It can be. It yes. can be very humorous. Yes, it's, it's humorous for most people, whether or not they realize it, I think. And this helps people see the humor. In it as well. Yes, I think so. A lot of people seem to identify with the experience. I've had a lot of people come up to me and tell me stories about their own therapists or bad therapy experiences that they've had. Um, but part of what we wanted to do with the movie was to give you sort of the experience of, of being there in, in the sessions and in the room and, and make it um, um, just something you couldn't escape from. Um, and, the, and the comedy comes from that. And the character in the movie is also unable to escape from this therapist. So. Now, on the nuts and bolts side of things, you were telling me that you shot on uh, the Panasonic 100A, is that correct? Yeah, the DVX 100B, actually, we shot, which is the new version of the 100A. And um, we, we shot with two cameras, and um, we improvised the movie on camera, um, although we ended up just using one of the cameras because I, we decided that we didn't want to cut away and, and give the audience a break. We wanted... Just like I said, the, the character has no escape from this therapist, and the audience also has no escape. Um, but it was, we shot the movie in my apartment. Um, I, I repainted my apartment for the movie. Um, I um, put everything in, I had a big closet, I put everything to a storage space, and I used the closet as my equipment holding pen. Um, I didn't um, rent a van except for when we were going to other locations. Um, but that saves a lot of money. I don't know if you guys talk about saving money on the movie. Definitely, show, but, definitely. But a big cost filmmakers find is renting that equipment van, making it bonded and insured. You have to, to park it in a lot that's uh, bonded and you know, insured so that you can get coverage from insurance. So if you skip having a van and you just do a U-Haul once a week to, to co talk uh, tote things around that saves a lot of uh, expenses and I also I try to shoot all my movies within three blocks of my apartment 
That saves on travel, if nothing else. Yes, yes. And you can work those late hours and then fall into bed after. That's right. It's a good idea that you pick locations that you can never be denied access to. Like if there's any other shots you need or you can work in them as long as you want. And that's, that's really important in terms of keeping costs down. Now, what was your shooting schedule? Well, the project was actually shot over a month. The actors built their characters over the course of that month. Um, so we have footage from the very beginning where you could sort of see people figuring out what they were doing to the end where people had so assumed their characters and it was so sort of layered through this whole experience. Um, another thing I think is really important in indie films, especially if you are working with low production values and shooting cheaply on, on digital, um, I, I didn't rent any 35 millimeter lenses and I think it's great the movie's here at Sundance and I didn't rent anything extra. Um, handheld, you know, so you have that emotional connection um, to, to the camera work. Um, but you really have a chance to really, really put your resources into and your attention into the acting and the performances and the story. And not it's not about, you know, a crane shot or a, some, a dolly shot or, a, you know, the crisp look of film. It's something more emotional and urgent um, and important. And, and uh, there's a, a great deal of freedom in working in a sort of the no budget mode. People sort of been trained by documentary film um, to be able to emotionally enter things with lower production values. You can still connect emotionally. People have been walking, watching documentaries for years now, and now it's not such a shock. You go to Sundance to see a feature, and it has been shot on digital or DVX, and it's not like, oh my god, this looks horrible. It's like, no, we. We, you get used to it the same way when you come home and your the lights are off, your eyes get used to the dark from like the high production value stuff and all of a sudden it does become like I don't care, uh, I don't care that this movie has these movie stars or this big budget, you know, this, this little movie is so em emotionally connected or it's so funny or it's so unusual or it's so unique that I'm, I'm responding to that because I never get to see that, so. Now, I'm, I'm intrigued by the fact that it was, it was improvisational to, to such a large extent. Is it, more, is it more challenging or more freeing to be directing a film where you're really re relying on the improvisational skills of your actors? Well, I think it's really important that you start with a strong outline. Um, it's not, and that my actors are improvisers, they're also writers. Um, they understand how to play an objective. It's not improvisation that is in the sense of, hey, you guys, go ahead and make up whatever you want kind of thing. You know, oh, look, look, wait, is that a bird flying by? You know, like, it's not like that. It's you have to keep everyone com completely focused in an almost tunnel vision way on what their objectives are. For a director, I think it's almost like a listening task where you have to keep uh, your truthfulness radar really sharply focused. And if it seems like it's not genuine, I just have them start over and start over and start over and start over. And something happens, this process of, finally it's like they're definitely gonna play the scene where they're trying to get what they want because they know I'm gonna make them do it again if they don't, <laughs> so. <laughs> Now, what's what's next for you? Do you have another film that you, that is in pre-production at this point? Um, I'm I'm have some project ideas that I'm working on, and uh, I mean, I do have to say, I guess you know, on one hand, it would be a dream were some producer to come along and want to take everything off my plate and, you know, put up the money and take care of everything, and and just I would just have to do the creative work, but one of the uh, great things about working in this mode is that I don't have to look to someone else to know if I'm going to make another movie or not. I know I'm going to make another movie, and I'm not going to have to wait 10 years. I'll have another movie, you know, within this next year. So. Now, is this your first film at Sundance? This is my second short at Sundance. That's exciting. That's very exciting. Yes. So that's when you know that wow, the first one wasn't a fluke. That's right. Doing that's the Sally right. Field, they like me. They really they like, like me. me. <laughs> yes, it's true. I mean, it, she really. Now I've, I've actually finally understood that Sally Fields moment once I got into Sundance for the second time. I totally felt like Sally Fields. <laughs> Everybody understands it then. It's just like that wasn't self-indulgent. Now we know yes, she, exactly. she the depth of her feelings there. Well, Madeline, I really want to thank you for spending some. Time 
time with us. Oh, and they know they can go to Sundance online, uh, to iTunes backslash Sundance. Um, it's, uh, the, the link is... Uh, we're cheating now. www.itunes.com backslash Sundance to see the su 10 Sundance shorts that they selected. They're showing online until the 25th. When the festival ends, you can watch them. After the 25th, you will not be able to see them. You'll have to find them and buy them then. So, And it'll be worth it, too. So, Madeline, thank you very much. Her movie, Counter Transference, at Sundance, her second film here. We can't wait for next year to see number three. I'm not going to jinx her. She will be back. I know that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Madeline. Sue Lawson, Madeline Olick, Indie Film Nation. Indie Film Nation, I want it my way.